the one and only Barbara Streisand. I'm the way we were. Extraordinary Ow, the legendary superstar. Those men are fighting for your right to make any kind of picture you want. And her incredible career. I only began to sing because I couldn't get a job as an actress, you see. The leading men. I'm no. still after him. Greatest love of her life. You always ask that to people. Why is that? And the tragedy that changed everything. I think it did scar me. Plus politics, saying no to plastic surgery, and the very personal side of fame. You see me as this star. I don't see myself like that. Barbara Streisand, the way she is, a funny girl. <laughs> this is Piers Morgan tonight. People ask me who I'd most like to have on my show as a guest. One name continuously pops up in my mind. She's a fabulous actress with a truly iconic voice, a voice that I believe is the greatest there's ever been. She's a humanitarian, a political activist, a wife, a mother, and she's a funny girl. She is, of course, Barbara Streisand. Did and I even got your name right. <laughs> Did you say Barbara? I said Barbara. Oh, Barbara. Okay. But more importantly, I got Streisand right. You absolutely Because did. we had dinner together and you lectured me that I kept That's calling right. you Barbara Streisand. Which is oh, a kind right. of British way of Very doing. English. Streisand. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> By God, you've got it. <laughs> now, I've just come from watching your brilliant new movie, and I don't oh, say that lightly, so Guilt Trip. And the reason so I sweet. loved it was it reminded me exactly of what it would be like if I went on a road trip with my mother. It's about you and Seth Rogen. You go off on this bizarre, crazy road trip together. <laughs> You're like the archetypal Jewish mama. He's the archetypal only son. Mm. And chaos ensues, but in a really loving, <laughs> touching, funny way. Let's watch a little clip. Ah. I'm over here, honey. Hey, Ma. I'm over here. I see you. Hey. All of Newark sees you. <laughs> Hi oh, there. Baby. Hey, Ma. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh, oh, my. Good to Look see you. you. Look yes. at you. Look oh, at my me. God. Yeah. Oh my God! What, okay, what, let's what, get out you're of the way a here. Sports jacket. Yeah, I am. How did you know even to buy a sports I, jacket? I took a class in it. Look yeah. at this. Oh my God! Honey, yeah, look, that's you left right. the price tag on. J. Crew, my fancy schmancy son. Yeah, that's wow. me. I'm just going to keep it in case it goes on sale. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a really touching movie. I, I, did, I found it very oh, moving. Yeah. It moved me to tears at one stage. It's, really? But it's also very funny. Good. You must have had a ball doing it, didn't you? Well, if you like, yeah, yeah, I, if you like working that much. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. It actually was fun. Do you hate all work, basically? No. What do you like doing? I love, I love making movies, actually, and I love recording. That's what I love. But you don't like performing in front of people? That's odd. It is strange. I never know what to do during the applause. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to do. It's like, oh, OK, all right, let's go on to the next thing. It's a strange thing to be live in front of people. You consider yourself to be primarily an actress that sings, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas many people would think you're the greatest singer, arguably, there's ever been. Oh, that's I awesome. would argue that. I don't know, but I only began to sing because I couldn't get a job as an actress, you see. Did and I entered the, the dream was talking. always to be an actress, to oh, be a yeah. star? Did you want to be a star? I think when I was young, I wanted to be a star, until I became a star. Mm. And then it's, it's a lot of work, you know? It's work to be a star. I don't enjoy the stardom part. I only enjoy the creative process. If I said to you, look, you can go to a desert island, all you can do for the rest of your life, you can sing, you can direct, you can act, or you can just sit there drinking out of coconuts. I would say direct. That, so that's the true love. Well, directing is so interesting, you know. It just sort of encompasses everything that you see, that you know, that you've felt, that you've observed. It, it just, you know, you can turn the camera on anything. Oh, my God. Just turn the camera and do... You're in control of your work. You're in control of your so-called art. I like that. When I watched a guilt trip, and we'll come to your mm -hmm. own guilt trips, because I'm sure there are millions of them, <clears throat> as, as I have, but it took me back to your early upbringing in many ways, because it's about motherhood, it's about uh, the relationship between a mother and her son. Mm -hmm. You had a, a very difficult upbringing. You know, you've talked about this before, but mm -hmm. I found it fascinating. Your father died when you were one. 15 months old. Right. I was one when my father died. So really? I, I saw that parallel, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I was very fortunate in that my mother remarried somebody who was 
a fantastic father to wow. me. Wow. You weren't so fortunate. Yeah. You had this very difficult relationship with your stepfather. Yeah. And so I was personally fascinated by that. Uh -huh. How much do you think it scarred you or did it just drive you? I think it did scar me more than it drove me. What drove me was the fact that my father's life was cut so short. He died at 35 years old, and it was, he was listed in a book of great leaders of education. He wrote incredible theses, if there's such a word, um, with um, just wonderful observations. And one of them, he, he was a teacher, and he also taught at Elmira Reformatory. He taught English to um, juvenile delinquents. And I could never read that piece till I got much older and had this certain experience. And then I was able to read it, and that was me. In other words, there is so much in the cellular memory or the, the, the DNA, because I never knew him. Mm -hmm. But at 16, I, I had discovered uh, Chekhov and Ibsen and Shakespeare. And when I finally read my father's thesis, it was how to teach, you know, prisoners and delinquents through Ibsen and Chekhov and Shakespeare, you know? Have you been able to find out a lot about him and his character and his life? Not really, although very mystical things happen, you know? I was doing a concert, I can't remember when, several years ago, and I was with my two girlfriends one night at my house, and they were talking about their fathers, and I couldn't relate to them mm. because they had the experience of having a father. <clears throat> I came up to my office after they left, and there was a letter from my father that had been sent to me through a cousin who has the same Streisand name mm. in Brooklyn in some synagogue, and she asked if he was related to me, and he says, it's my cousin, and she said, could you give this to Barbara? And this was my father's girlfriend when he was 19 years old. Wow. And she found me through my cousin, and it was a poem written to her, but such a beautiful poem, and it talked about love. The only thing really in this world is love, was the moral of the poem. Um, with an enigmatic uh, structure in it that you had to find, you had to find the key to find his I mean, he's such an interesting mind. Extraordinary. So extraordinary. He was 19 when he wrote this. Yeah. What did that make you feel? That he was telling me something. That it was to me. What was he telling it was, you? It was this message that, you know, no matter what, um, love is the answer. That's why I called my album Love is the Answer. It's also a line from a song, but... Your character in the movie, mm -hmm. The Guilt Trip, has been in love... Well, to, to the, the viewer has been in love properly twice in her life, to the man she married and then to this other guy that, you know, she fell in love with. But how many it's times good. have you in your life been properly in love? How many times have I been in love? I should have prepared for this because I see you ask everybody <laughs> this question. Although you didn't ask Mike Tyson. No, there's question. a reason for that. Oh, is that right? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. Um... At least five or six. Really? See, that's fascinating. Does, does the wider world know all of them? You didn't ask how long it lasted. No. This love feeling or whatever, but... How, how long does it need to last to qualify for proper love, do you think? Mm. Oh, maybe seven. Um, <laughs> not that long. What, eight months, would you say? Or well, maybe years. I think it's years. different for, it, for years. Some years, people have years. it literally in a flash. They, you know, I do believe that there can be love at first sight. I've, I know people where that's happened, mm -hmm. and they've been very happy the rest of their lives together. Wow. They get yeah. lucky. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it interesting? It's an, it's an, a recognition of something. I knew I liked you from the minute, but I didn't know that your father um, died mm. that early. And there is, you see, we don't, we never talked about it. You might have known that about me, mm. but there's something that you recognize in someone's past and it's it's a void mm. that you recognize yeah, and, I think, and I think you, you, you think? become I'm sure you have the same but 
you're perennially curious because you never knew this person who yet despite that was such a pivotal part of your life clearly it's why you're here yeah uh, that's what I find fascinating about it yeah yeah did you feel that your mother properly loved you or was there a sense always of jealousy that you were leading the kind of life perhaps she dreamt of herself she she was a wonderful singer my mother had a great voice not like mine not like my sisters not like my son's a high soprano voice but like a bird mm. I mean really beautiful but um, I used to say mom you know why didn't you try to get a career as a singer no she said she was too shy she couldn't do it and I'm basically shy too but there that that makes the difference you know how do you succeed if you don't try mm -hmm. how did how did you feel when your mother died did you feel that you had reconciled things with her basically yeah a little a, t a short time before she died I remember going to her house and she had Alzheimer's and uh, she didn't recognize me really but I started to sing her a melody of something she had sung when she was younger and that she remembered and it just shows you the power of music doesn't mm -hmm. it what was it you sang? do you remember it was something that that she made a record of when she when I was 13 and she took me but it was really because she made the records mm -hmm. and then I was able to make a record when I was 13 do you think she was proud of you you know what it was I used to say ma how come you never told me I love you you mm. never said those words or really hugged me I, I she said she said I didn't want you to get a swelled head <laughs> she said she said I knew that my parents loved me but they didn't have to tell me all the time mm. they it's a certain coldness you know it's not tactile it's mm. not physical it's it's a uh, I don't know what it is it was strange to me always strange to me how are you with your son oh I I just I think everything he does is great mm. you know I mean my son that's unconditional love I, I swear it's a terrible thing to say but I think my son could do something really bad and I know I would find a way to justify it you sang with your son Jason this is in September let's just take a look at this because it's very what? moving what do you have have a gorgeous voice he does have an amazing voice oh my god but look at that he's he had never been on stage before but he's done so much incredible work on himself mm. that he actually could have the courage he says I'm never gonna perform he said I like recording but I'm never gonna perform live and I said Jason when I heard him sing that song on this, this record mm. he made I said we've got to sing it together mm. I have to sing that it was with beautiful you. to watch Wow and we found it on the internet how do you like that I've never <laughs> seen that before have you not ever seen that no nope. amazing we have it on the television show that's gonna come out on Mother's Day hopefully but I've never seen it on well it's great let's take a little break because I want to come back we'll talk about Jason a bit more because mm. I want to know if you've ever been on a road trip with him uh, whether there's any parallel with the movie but I want to come back first and talk about <laughs> some politics the way we were my favorite movie mm. I want to know what what rocks your political boat because I know for a fact a lot does <laughs> My conversation with Barbara Streisand took place before the shooting in Newtown. Ms. Streisand offered her condolences to the families of the victims. In a statement on her website, she said, The horrible tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut has brought to the forefront a much needed and long overdue national conversation regarding the lack of gun control and mental health services in our country. I hope the story of Sandy Hook Elementary finally catalyzes the nation and our leaders in Washington to commit to doing something substantive regarding gun control and access to mental health care services to those who desperately need it. We'll be right back. The Russians don't want anybody in Spain but the Spanish. Is that scary? They're communists, yes, but they want total disarmament now. Is that scary? Hitler and Mussolini are using the Spanish earth as testing ground for what they want. Another world war, is that scary? You're darn right it is. 
Barbara Streisand and the way we were. That, that is my single favourite movie of all time. And I, I told really? Robert Redford that when he came in. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, I interviewed Robert Redford about it. And he said he'd been resisting your clarion call for a sequel yeah. ever since. It's such a good story, the sequel. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm still after him. He's never made a sequel to anything, he told me. He just yeah. doesn't believe in I sequels. I understand that. I understand it. But this happens to be a great story. I wanted it to be released on the 25th anniversary, but we never made what it. Would have ha what would have happened? It just was a very interesting story about through their daughter and her political activism at Berkeley in 1968 in the Democratic National Convention, mm. which is very interesting. It was and a beautiful love story, again. Now, I know that you're into your politics big time because we spent most of the last month emailing <laughs> each other about Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. <laughs> And you were tearing me off a new one, I believe is the American phrase, uh, for what you perceive to be my lack of support for the president. It wasn't That's that. That's right. I was more interested in the debate we were having. It was a very good one, actually. I found it very informative. I kept but sending you articles, right? You did, you did. And mm -hmm. your man won. And uh, your, I... ma your man didn't? No, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm British. I can't, I can't vote I know, for but you... But, but no, my argument you to you for? was I, I, I wondered whether Mitt Romney could be better for the American economy, oh my God, given no. his background. No, you know why? You were having none of it. Do you know why? There have been businessmen who have turned presidents. I think Herbert Hoover, mm. George Bush, the first George Bush. Mm. Businessmen, I think uh, there was a couple of others. Lousy presidents. <laughs> Businessmen make lousy presidents. Why have you been so consistently supportive of Obama? I can't even imagine thinking about what would happen to the Supreme Court if a Republican was the, were the president, you know? Um, I mean, Citizens United is a horrible thing that people can spend and waste this amount of money on elections. Think of all the, you know, the people that could be benefit, could benefit from that money, you know? There have been two elections since I've been in America. Mm -hmm. There have been two elections where one party has had far more financial firepower than the other. One was here in California with mm -hmm. Meg Whitman, and one was nationally, where Romney clearly had more money than, than Obama for most of that campaign. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, the one with the most money lost. Isn't that great? What because, does that tell you about the, the American people, people? The people are getting smarter. They're going, I don't like this, all this amount of money spent on this election. I mean, there should be a given, campaign finance reform is very important. Mm -hmm. And I hope somebody does something about it. I mean, you should have a given amount, equal amount, mm. equal airtime, and that's it. You know? That idea of corporations being people? Mm. No, no. It's not. This is a country of, by, and for the people, not of, by, and for the corporation. You know, it's like, I, because I'm so against GMOs, you know, uh, the modified food, and I'm so um, against lobbying, you know, like chemical companies lobbying and that proposition 37 you know was was bad and uh, that's scary because the poison and you know the poison in our foods and um, in the air and pollution and they give discretionary polluters we are having climate change the Republicans don't seem to want to acknowledge that it's a major problem and um, how, you have to be a Democrat to understand that or to believe in that. Have you ever been in love with a Republican? Never. Could you ever be? No. <laughs> really? That's fascinating. Well, I mean, unless there was an enormous sexual chemistry and, you know, <laughs> and I had to... We never talked about politics. <laughs> maybe. But I, I can't quite imagine it, no. I well, what have been so. the proudest moments for you with Obama? I'd imagine one of them was when he came out so vocally for gay rights, finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. What else? Uh, what else has he done, I guess? Yeah, that you're, that you're particularly proud oh, of his, him for doing. his stance for women. Women, the power of women, or not allowing, just for that one reason. You know, in my show, I would say, well, I'm not going to tell you my concert tour, the limited concert tour. I would say, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but if you want clean air, you want, you know, good food and so forth. And if you believe that a woman has a right to choose what happens in her own body, in other words, or you think that your body belongs to the state, mm. um, there's a clear choice. How could you, thank God that Aiken and Mordock came out with those 
extremist they were extraordinary views. Extraordinary statements, weren't they? Unbelievable. I thought, isn't that great? Keep talking, boys. Keep talking. What was amazing was when you watched the footage of those moments, mm. neither of them had a clue that they said anything remotely contentious. Yeah, that's so scary, isn't it? I found that, that pretty unsettling. That you could reach yeah. the point of potentially becoming a senator yeah. and actually have no clue that what you're saying is deeply offensive to many people. Right. Some men, mostly women, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was deeply offensive. Do you feel that there's any form of real equality yet in America for, for women? Well, one of the last countries to ever think of having a woman be president. Mm. But I think that's possible now. But it wasn't years ago. Do you think Hillary is, is likely to run in 2016? I, I don't know, but I hope after a four-year rest mm. that she would run because she would be a great woman president. Let's take another break. Let's come back and talk Hollywood. Your great love. It is. I want to know who you think the greatest movie star in the world is. Ever. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Other than yourself. No, no. Okay. <laughs> We've just realised. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. What do you think when you see yourself from that era? That was from Yentl in 1983. Yeah. What do I think? Yeah, when you look at yourself. I'm so objective when I look at myself. You know, when I'm directing a movie and I'm editing, you know, it's always she, her. It's not me. It's like the character in the movie. Do you and... see a beautiful woman there? Not particularly. Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought you look beautiful? From certain angles. <laughs> really? Which is your best angle? Well, my left. Why? Because mm, my eyes don't look as cross-eyed sometimes. or That's, my what, nose that's is really better, what you feel? My mouth is better. Yeah, I'm like two different people on two sides, I think. Let's, Let's take a look at a clip from one of my favourite films. This is your film debut, Funny Girl, in 1968. To live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Don't tell me not to fly. I simply got to. If someone takes a spill, it's me and not you. Who told you you're allowed to rain on my parade? <laughs> it's odd. The fabulous you know, film. You know what it is? I don't like to live in the past. I, I like to live in the present, mm. so it's always odd for me to see, to see We've things. We've got from you the from past. when you're 19 years old. This you will do? really torment you. Yeah, let's watch whoa, this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now you've, now you've triggered this up. Come 19 on. years old. Mm. When a bee lies sleeping in the palm of your hand, you're bewitched and deep. You see, I find that utterly spellbinding. You're I'll be honest with you. What was funny was you watching it and all you're thinking of, I look cross-eyed. And I'm thinking, there's yeah. this beautiful young woman singing like an angel. Isn't that sweet? We no, have two slightly so different perspectives. We don't appreciate ourselves, most people. It's interesting. How have you resisted the sort of self-masticated plunge into plastic surgery that so many... American female stars feel compelled to do? I don't trust most people. You know, when I was younger, I thought, well, God, if only I could just take off like that little bit and just mm. shorten it just a little bit, but what if he screws up? Mm. You know? So I just, and I, I really don't like the idea of, of um, changing one's face, you know, like uh, capping the teeth or, mm. or stuff like that to change a face, no. Who is the greatest actor you've ever seen? Because I know you love acting. It's your great love, your great passion. Who do you think? Marlon Brando. Really? Oh, no question. Why? Do you doubt that? No, I don't, actually. I think yeah. he would definitely... Although I remember interviewing Dennis Hopper once, and he said James Dean for him. 
add the Brando thing as well. Mm. He said it'd be... But Brando was first. Yeah. No, he was fascinating. Mm. He would call me up sometimes. Well, I'm Brando. He called me up once and said, sing me a song. <laughs> and I said, Marlon, that's like me asking you to recite Hamlet. <laughs> To which he proceeded to recite a soliloquy <laughs> from Hamlet. Did was, you have to sing? I did. What did you sing in? I sang a song called Nobody's Heart Belongs to Me. Just down the phone to Marlon Brando. And I remember sitting in my kitchen, I'll never forget this, one of those moments you never forget. I'm going, this is before they had gizmos to record things, you know, and I'm going... <laughs> doing Hamlet. So I had to sing him a song. And what did course. he say at the end of it? I don't remember that. Did he, was it then a regular thing? Would he ring up on a Friday night and say, where's my song, or...? We, he, we once went on a short road trip together. You and Marlon Brando? Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. Where did you go? He wanted to take me to the desert to see the wildflowers. I bet he did. And, and sleep over in a ghost town, he Now said. we're getting there. But I didn't, I was such a nice Jewish girl. <laughs> that I just said, Marlon, I can't stay overnight with you. I'll go with you for the day, but you have to take me home. So Marlon clearly wanted to do more than just look at flowers with you. Well, he wanted to sleep on in the desert with me. But and you turned down Marlon Yeah, Brandy. I thought, yeah, absolutely. How did he take rejection? He was fine. But, I mean, he would do things like, you know, we, were, we would talk for hours and hours sometimes on the phone. It was great. Well, what about? I find this mesmerising, because you and Marlon Brando, the greatest singer and the greatest actor, just chewing the fat on the phone. Yeah, we would talk for hours. Um, interesting, when we went on that road trip, uh, he had just done, um, you know, the, the, the sexual one, Last Tango in Paris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never asked him about acting. But he told me, you know, it, it was interesting what he was telling me, and I'll write about it someday. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was older and I was doing my last... No, I was uh, nuts, mm -hmm. yeah. And then he was telling me all these things, you know, how he wears an earwig mm -hmm. so he could hear the lines. Yeah. They would, a guy would speak the lines. I because I was it. saying to him, Jesus, you know, Marlon, I didn't want to know the lines of this movie because I was supposed to be uh, under an influence of a drug mm -hmm. in nuts. And but then he started to tell me, but I never wanted to ask him, impose on him. He would come, he came to my house once and he said, okay, before we say anything, look into my eyes and don't, don't smile or anything. See how long you could do it. And actually, I was just reading a book about him. Well, how long did you do it? Don't leave me in I suspense. couldn't do it. I kept laughing. <laughs> but he was amazing. And I see in this book that he does that with people. Amazing. Yeah. Let's take a break. Let's come back and talk about singing. Singing? Yeah. Because I look at you and I okay. see the greatest singer wow. there's ever been. And I want to know how you do this. It's a sweet, it's a fact. The Barbara yes. Streisand. Oh my God. So when we had dinner, I said to you, I found this thing on YouTube mm -hmm. from you from 1975, a television special called Funny Girls to Funny Lady. And right. I said, it is so amazing that it's breathtaking. That was the clip. Wow. And I've now played it to a lot of other quite famous people. I won't embarrass them by saying who it is. Yeah. And they all just sit there, big singers, superstars. Yeah. And they sit there with their mouths open. Really? Yeah, because it's just almost, I would say, musical perfection. But also you just look... So dazzling in that wow, clip. That's so nice. But what do you feel when you see it? I, I can't see what you see. I really can't. Really? I'm looking at that. Why was I wearing that kind of thing over the black dress? <laughs> and, God, my hair was light and I was a little chubby. But um, <laughs> you weren't chubby. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. But, no, but you weren't. You actually, looked beautiful. The interesting thing about you was the singing, and we'll, we'll come mm -hmm. to the other the sort of amazing mm -hmm. success you've had. But it's the fact you got so cripplingly shy 
when you perform live, I found really interesting that you played this huge concert, I think, in New York once, 130,000 people. Oh, yeah, 150. And, they, okay. and, and you just Central forgot Park. and you forgot the words right. to a few big right. songs. Right. And it freaked you out so much. Right. Right. You didn't perform again live for how long? 27 years. I mean, that, it's incredible. Yeah. But at the peak of your powers, yeah. when you could have earned presumably a million dollars a night in Vegas, you just stopped. Mm -hmm. That's some freak out you were going I through. Know. But when you had that freak it's like out. When you get freaked out. Yeah, tell me how you're feeling. Because you're Barbara Streisand. I never imagined that people with your talent could ever feel that nervous. But clearly, it just you know, completely. There's probably several people called Barbara Streisand. Meaning, you see me as this star. Mm. I don't see myself like that. I'm this girl. I'm this woman. I'm this mother. Mm. I'm this wife. You know, I, I don't. I don't dress up, I don't, at home, you know, I'm a, I don't like to say schlump, but, uh, <laughs> but more like the, you know, the picture you saw me in, yeah, I was very comfortable doing that picture. I wore a sweatsuit and sneakers. Well, so you were the, was when I met you, what I, was, what I loved about it was you were the least starry superstar I'd ever met in my life. I was imagining, after all these diva stories I'd read about over the years, mm -hmm. which I kind of half hoped were true. I like I my know, divas to be terrible? divas. No. And you weren't remotely diverish. You were just very, very normal and nice. I hate to disappoint you. Have you ever been what a terrible diva? What the hell diva? is a diva? I don't even know. Have you ever been one? No. Have you ever screamed at people? Oh, yeah, I scream at people. How but loudly? That, that, but that doesn't mean, <laughs> you know, I scream at my husband. It doesn't make me a diva. Uh, no, Are you no, a perfectionist? What, what? I am proud to say I am. But there is no such thing as perfection. And I found that out when I was 15 years old. I wrote it in my journal mm. that uh, perfection is imperfection. So it has that humanity, mm. a human quality. Otherwise, it's too cold, right? You could just strive for perfection. Better word is excellence. Strive for excellence. What I love about you is that we're heading towards Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you can even sing like Christmas stuff better than anybody else. Watch this. I what? found this on the internet, You're too. You're kidding me. Silent night. I like that. Holy night. Oh, I was forced that night. All is calm. All is bright. Round young virgin. You see, you're saying you sound hoarse. That's I've hoarse. got goosebumps. This is the this is why you are such a perfectionist. This must be it's, why you're so good. Maybe because I never, never really, happy. I'm never in love with what I do. That's right. What things do so, you do that we maybe wouldn't know? Are you a secret painter? Do you, oh, do I you actually build draw. things, create things? I actually draw. Um, I take photographs. I wrote a book on design. That's interesting to me because that, that's, that's a lot to do with directing too. It's composition and color and, you know, monochromatic frames and that interests me. Are you a naturally restless person or can you just completely relax if you want to? Hmm. I think more so now I can relax. I mean, I really like quiet. Hmm. I like to read and be quiet and watch films and or have interesting conversations. Most conversations are not that interesting. That's why I like politics, political. Um, and you're great at that. I mean, I've had some ding-dongs with you, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. Now, you, you give as good <laughs> as you get. No holds barred. No, that was fun. Let's come back and talk more about the guilt trip. I want to know what guilt trips you've had in your life. And I want names. Hmm. <laughs> trip with me mom you want to drive cross country with me yeah no it's you know we won't be gone long it's only eight days in a car together wait a minute i want to make sure that i'm hearing this correctly you want to spend a week in a car with your mother more than anything in the world <laughs> don't you think I might get on your nerves a little bit? No, it was just a thought, and if you don't want to do it, then fine. I don't want to push you in. Matt, Matt, am I so awful that you can't spend... <laughs> Bob Streisand in The Guilt Trip uh, is a very warm film. It is funny, but it's also very warm and poignant in places. Could you have ever imagined doing a road trip with your son like that for a week? 
I, I, yeah, I could imagine doing with them. You would drive each other mad. I think um, no, my mother no. and I could probably last about a day. Really? Yeah, because we're just too similar. It would just, you know, there'd be too much oh, arguing, funny. I'm sure. Really? Yeah, she probably wouldn't admit it, but I bet there would be. No, we never did that. But I love travelling with him now on my tour. Mm. That was great, because he brought his dog, I brought my dog, and <laughs> we ate chashu bows together. <laughs> chashu bao, you know what that is? Yeah. The Chinese del delicacy, yeah. like a hamburger. But I, I've taken road trips with my husband. Mm. How do they go? It actually brings us closer. Because he's it's a very good. kind of... Oh, I've only met him uh, once or twice, but he's mm -hmm. a very... seems a very calming influence and yeah, very self-confident, you know, yeah, very... Yeah. Uh, Unstarry again. Yeah, I really liked yeah. him. He's a very down-to-earth kind of character. Yeah, he's very different than I am. I'm much more. I mean, how much like the, the character you play, Joyce? Are you in real life? Are you quite neurotic? Um, in a good way, but are you quite? Probably, probably. Thank you. I'm on good behaviour now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to you, the future because. You're somebody I get the feeling, just having talked to you as well, that you don't really like going on about the past. No. To you, it's yeah. about what's happening next. Yeah, and being here in the present and being... It's hard, too, you know, just trying to be grateful for everything that's positive and not dwell on the negative, but it's in my character to see things more pessimistically than optimistically, so I have to work at that. You've also managed your career, I think, so skillfully, and it may have been almost by default. It may be because you didn't want to put yourself out there much or whatever, but... Lazy. You, maybe that, yeah. I mean, your word's not mine, but, I mean, yeah. certainly you've, you haven't done that many tours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or released that many albums by comparison to many contemporaries over that right. period. You haven't made that many movies. Right. Um, but what you've managed to do is make each time you do anything, you make it an event that people look forward to. And that may be the secret of your incredible longevity. I mean, do you think that? Well, it's not conscious. It's the fact that I do what I, especially in relationships, if I, you know, I'm newly going with Jim, I don't have any desire to work. Sometimes work is a, a substitute mm. for... Um, for life. For life. That's right. Cause so you, look at, you look at your, your track record here. 51 gold albums, 30 platinum, 18 multi-platinum, 8 Grammys, 2 honorary Grammys. That's just the music, you know, Oscars, Emmys, Grammys, the acting and so on. It's, it's an unbelievable array of honours, medals, trophies. You must have a cabinet room the size of a New York Yankees. But, I mean, does any of that really motivate you? Do you ever look at it and think, yeah, I haven't done badly for a, mm -hmm. a young girl from Brooklyn? Every once in a while, I used to hide all these awards, and then one day I, saw, I, I was doing a new house and... Um, actually, it was not... So well, it was a long time ago, but a few, ten years ago, let's say. And I decided, I'll put them in a room. You can't see them when you walk in. Mm. But they're there, and I, I do appreciate them now, I must say. I do say, oh, good, I, I was here. Mm. I'm still here, but I, I was here. You know, I think it's because my father, and maybe you relate to this, mm. died so young mm. that um, I want to be remembered. I want to have made a mark here. And records and films, um, television shows, you know, they do that. They, mm. they say, you existed, you were here, and hopefully for, you know, good purpose. Let's take a final break. Let's talk about other ways you're going to be remembered, most of which I think for your charitable work. Mm. I want to talk about heart disease and mm -hmm, the other philanthropy mm -hmm, you've mm -hmm. done, because you've raised a lot of money and made a big difference. I hope so. fun to trace your lineage all the way back. Yes, and it turns out, Jack T. Burns, that you are 123rd Israelite. Welcome to the tribe, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Little fuckers there with Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. Great fun. Did you, did you like making that? It's not a challenge, put it that way. <laughs> Let's talk about um, your philanthropic uh, career, because that's been almost as relentless and mm. productive as anything else you've done. One of the particular things that you're so keen on is women's heart disease. Tell me why that's been such a passionate thing for because, you. Because, you know, I'm... I'm um, I dislike inequality mm. so much, whether it's, you know, gender issues or gay rights or whatever. Even in the medical sciences, there is um, discrimination. 
So it turns out that more women die of heart disease now than all cancers combined. More women die of heart disease rather than men. More women than men die of heart disease. Did you know that? I just, I was so shocked by some of these statistics. I didn't know some of those until I researched yeah, this interview. That's right. And I saw why you were so right. uh, strong about it. And it is, it's startling. And 50 years of research have, have been done on men. I'll tell you a funny story too. And you realize how powerful females are, okay? Mm. That even in the research, a woman doctor discovered uh, how to grow a heart mm. by, from stem cells in... Um, you know, in a petri dish, whatever, mm. that's beating. How did she do it? You know how she did it? With only female stem cells, because literally the male stem cells got lost. <laughs> like in life. And they refused to ask for directions. Now, this is true. Now, can you imagine that? Mm. So, I just believe, you know, breast cancer has done such a magnificent job raising millions and millions of dollars to help that disease, but let's say 39,520 women died of breast cancer one year in the last couple of years. 455,000 died of heart disease. Mm -hmm. And we haven't learned yet those organizational skills in order to raise awareness and subsequent funds to help that because women have a different, a smaller vascular system called the microvascular system we need different equipment different diagnostic techniques in order to examine women mm. and uh it's it's a it's it's something that i i really look forward to well, good for you good for you barbara it's been such a pleasure i've waited so long for this oh, moment you have not disappointed thank you so much and really. this is your album which is release me which is oh. Uh, as stunning as your eyes look oh, on there. You, thank you. And the guilt trip. It's funny, it's warm, it's smart, it's poignant, it's bursting with talent. Mm. It is Barbara Streisand on film. <laughs> what more can I say? Go to barbastreisand.com for all things Barbara. It's been such a pleasure. Come back, please. Don't leave it so long next time. Thank you so much. It took me 47 years to get you in front of me. 47? I'm 47. You're kidding. That's how long it took me to get you to do when an interview. When you were a baby, you wanted to do an interview? With yes. Me? You have, don't have to exaggerate. Ask Just my mother. Tell the moment truth. I came out, I sang the way we were. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, lovely to see you. Nice to see the you. The great too. Barbara Streisand.